Hey my elegant family, welcome to another episode of Winnie's School of Elegance. I'm here with another spicy topic. <laughs> Today's episode is going to be about what you can do to keep your partner's interests alive. Let's get right into it, shall we? The very first way that I've put down here on my list on how you can keep your partner's interest is to have an open communication system where you're able to express yourself and talk about the things that you feel, the things that you observe, and the things that actually need to be said. And this is where knowing how to communicate effectively comes in very handy. As an elegant person, you need to learn how to communicate effectively and communicating effectively requires you to know when to communicate, how to pass across whatever message that you have, and at the same time, also bear in mind that whoever you're communicating with needs to be communicated to from a place of respect, consideration and kindness if you haven't watched our video on how to communicate effectively i think i would ask that you go watch that video after watching this one so that you know have an idea of how you can communicate with your partner so one way to keep your partner's interest alive is to have an open communication system where you both are able to communicate with each other you are able to express your feelings, you're able to express your thoughts, you're able to express your ideas and your decisions in a respectful, considerate and a very kind manner as well. This allows you and your partner to feel heard, to feel seen and then to feel like you're valuable and that you matter in the relationship. The second point that I've put down here on my list is learn to listen. Listen to both the said and the unsaid. When your partner is communicating to you, ensure that you're listening attentively. You listen because you want to actually see things from your partner's point of view. And when you listen that way, there is a lot that you can learn about your partner. And again, I said also listen to the unsaid. There is so many things your partner may not be able to communicate to you. Maybe not because he does, he doesn't, he or she doesn't want to communicate it but they don't feel like it's necessary to communicate. And then when you are not list when you are actually listening to what they are actually not saying, you are able to see and observe a lot of things about your partner that will help you learn a lot about them as well. You can actually learn the things that they like, the things that they do not like, the things that matter to them, which actually sparks things up in their hearts. And that's another way you can keep their interest alive. The third thing that I've put down here on how you can keep your partner's interest alive would be find out what your partner's love language is. Love language is the one way that you can effectively love somebody in your life based off of how they want to be loved. A lot of people tend to love people how they want to love them. But people have ways that they want to be loved. And when you take the time to find out what your partner's love language is, it helps you love them right. So there's this book, it's called The Five Love Languages, and it talks about the five main love languages of any human person. So the five love languages are physical touch, acts of service, gift giving, quality time, and words of affirmation. Do you know what your love language is? And do you know what your partner's love language is? I implore you to go ahead and read that book if you haven't read it so that you know how to approach or how to deal with your partner the way that they want to be loved. You want to love your partner how they want to be loved, not how you want to love them. And that is very key in keeping your partner's interest. The next one on my list is actually one that is, it's very, very typical, no brainer, but it's one that a lot of people do not observe. And I've called it observing date nights. Now, when I say date nights, I don't mean it necessarily has to be at night. I think we should just call it observing dates. So date nights should be a priority. Now, date night doesn't even require or necessarily mean that you have to get dressed, look all flashy and step out of the house to go to a restaurant and have fine dining. That's not what date night is. You can have date night in your house. You can have something called a movie night in your house with your partner. 
You can have date night by cooking together in the kitchen. You can even just have date night by just sitting down and talking over a meal in your home. If you want to take things further, you can go to a restaurant, have a meal. You can take a walk in the park, take a walk in your estate. What does date night mean to you? Find out the activities that you can perform during date night. Again, it doesn't necessarily have to be at night. It can be during the day. Taking a walk in the park, going to play tennis, playing basketball. Something that bonds you guys together and brings you both closer. It's something that you want to be doing so observe date night it should be a priority and you should also give it a schedule maybe once a week or once in two weeks depending on the schedule of you and your partner the next point that i've put down here on my list would be schedule times to review your relationship when you come together as a couple if the relationship really matters to you of course you would have set a goal or set goals or have a clear vision or directive on how on how you want your relationship to flow so ever so often get time together schedule a time together and sit down and have a, an open honest conversation about um, the dynamics of the relationship review it you guys talk about what needs to be mended what needs to be fixed you guys also talk about the things that are so good that you need to just continue to improve on and work on. That's the time where you talk to your partner about things that you feel um, um, they can do better or you applaud them on things that they're already doing so good so that they know what they're doing right. That's where you just talk. You just have open, honest conversations. So what you can do is you can schedule a time once a month, usually maybe at the end of the month or even once a week if you want it to be often take your relationship very seriously and when you really have open honest conversations like this i tell you that it keeps not just your partner's interest alive it also keeps your interest in the relationship alive as well okay the next point that i've put down here on my list would be create an environment for romantic energy to flow see it's very important that you're intentionally creating this moment of romance in your home so the environment of romance can be you just even just having a clean organized home and then you maybe light a candle or two everywhere smells really nice you play light music quiet music and there's just calm and peace in the house and when you both are there together it just feels like a zen place for you both to cohabit so create romantic moments it can even be once in a while in the bedroom, that's for the married people. You can be together in the bedroom as a wife or even as a husband. You can go the extra mile and do something fancy in the bedroom that just makes everywhere feel very romantic. If you make dinner for your wife or your husband, instead of just serving it and be like, oh babe, your food is ready, take it from the kitchen, bass bowl, steak. No, set the table nicely. You can learn how to set up your plates and your cutlery and then maybe light a candle on the table and you and your husband sit down on the table and have a romantic dinner together in the house. That's a romantic environment. It can even be something as little as when you're heading out the door, maybe you're going out for the day, you can leave a note on your on your partner's bum at the bedside of the table or where you know they're going to see it and just write something really nice about them or something you know that will put a smile on your face. You can put it in their car, you can put it in their bag, you can put it in, just creates, creates an environment that allows romantic energy to flow. Trust me, those little tiny acts goes a long way in showing your partner how valuable they mean to you. And trust me, it will keep their interests alive. The next way to keep your partner's interest alive, guys, is come closer. Have pillow talks. Pillow talks. The power of pillow talks in creating bonding moments for you and your partner cannot be overly emphasized. Now, pillow talk doesn't even necessarily have to happen just on the bed alone. It can even happen when both of you are sitting in the couch. But pillow talks are those times where you just silently whisper sweet words and you guys can even have conversations full-on conversations but you're having it in such a very romantic calm easy way where nothing is forced there is no tensed energy it's just calmness it's just like sweetness you're whispering sweet words into the ears of your partner and you're saying it in a very soft way not harsh pillow talks the tone of pillow talks is not your normal regular tone you bring your tone like down many notches and you go 
Hi babe, so how was your day today? What did you do? And then while you're having the pillow talks and you're talking, you're caressing his beard, rubbing his head, he's touching your back, he's stroking his hands through your hair. Do this often. I'm telling you guys, do this often. Make it a lifestyle. Make it a lifestyle and you find that the bond between you and your partner continues to grow stronger and stronger. Before you know it, you find that a lot of the problems in your relationship is being solved because you are actively conversing in that manner. Trust me, it's an amazing way to bond with your partner. So make sure that you prioritize pillow talks, okay? The next point that I've put down here on how to increase and grow your partner's interest would be give each other a lot of space. A lot of space. There is something in, um, there's a theory in economics that says that scarcity creates value. Trust me, when you are both in each other's faces, there is a high tendency that you're both likely to get tired of each other at some point, no matter how in love you are with each other. But when you just allow each other to just, I'm not saying don't have bonding times together, have that but also have times away where you stay away and step up aside from each other to just be on your own i call those times me times so at that time you step away you can even be in the same house but you are both away from each other for a bit like just give yourself space to sometimes your partner needs time to well they need time to re-strategize they need time to think someone like me i'm big on me time Every day in a day, I like to take out a couple of hours to spend time by myself, reading a book, worshipping, praying, doing something that just makes me recharge and with well. And you find that when you've taken that time apart and you come back together, or whilst you're even taking that time apart, you're, you're look, you have something you're looking forward to. Oh, I'm going to meet my partner later. We're going to catch up for something. We're going to talk about something later. It just keeps that spark up. It keeps that spark up because you guys are not always just there choking and choking each other. So give yourself space, a lot of it. The next one would be take good care of yourself. When you are flourishing as an individual, you are able to attract good things and good, good vibes into your life and people would want to come to you when you're flourishing, when you're a flourishing individual. So take the time to take care of yourself physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. Don't stop doing the things that make you feel good. Don't stop doing the things that make you feel alive, that makes you feel your best. Because when you feel your best and you are at your best self, you will glow and you will shine. And what happens to a light that shines? It attracts things to it your husband would or your partner or your or your wife would would want to come to you because they like this beautiful positive energy that you're about but if you don't take time to take care of yourself and when you're constantly stressing constantly nagging constantly worrying constantly like nobody would come close to you so take the time to mentally distress take the time to physically look good dress well you take care of yourself and you get what I mean? So take time to take care of yourself because when you flourish, you attract people to you, including your partners. Okay? Next point that I've put down here would be to flirt with your partner. See, there's this thing about Africans that Africans believe so much, so much, so much in um, not expressing themselves or they feel like when they express themselves they put themselves in a vulnerable state i ha i once met this guy who told me that um his friends will think that that how can someone that they call odobu or odobu in Igbo means like king like how can someone who that people see as a tough man physically how can he be telling a woman i love you in public or be saying i miss you that what will his friends think about him and i'm like what the hell kind of mentality is that <laughs> don't do that you should be able to keep the romance in your relationship alive flirt if you must if it means saying i love you a million times so if both of you are even together in the house once in a while just go maybe your partner is watching tv and you're just passing by just walk up to him or her and rub his head and go babe i love you 
You're so handsome. You're so beautiful. Like, flirt with them. Maybe even go tap their, tap something. Like, let them know that you are there. Maybe you're walking past, past him or past her. And then you just go, just touch their head and just play with something about, about, just do something flirtatious. You can do something as flirtatious as maybe he's on the phone call and showing a call and then you just go, you just give him a good bomb shake. Like these ones are for married people, Sha. Give him a good bomb shake, like wind your waist a bit, let him know that, see, I'm still around though, and I still got game. <laughs> you get what I mean? So flirt with your partner. Don't stop flirting. Don't stop flirting. No, no matter how long you guys have both been in the relationship, still flirt. Okay, if you and your partner are spiritual people who believe so much in um, prayer, who believe so much in um, seeing things from the spiritual realm, I believe that you and your partner should take a lot of time to pray together, worship together, fast together, meditate together. Having prayer and worship and meditation sessions with your partner is the highest form of intimacy. Especially if you understand the importance of the spirits, of how the spirit realm functions. Prayer, worship, meditation, studying the word of God together with your partner is the highest level of intimacy. It beats physical sex hands down like so many ways i'm telling you if you're about that life spend a lot of time praying fellowshipping together as a couple spend that time together trust me you it will help strengthen your your bond in a way that is indescribable okay the next point i've put down here would be compliment each other when your partner does something that you feel is worthy of complimenting, be very vocal. Be very vocal. Don't only be vocal when your partner has done something wrong. In fact, learn to be less vocal and be more empathious your, towards your partner when they've done something wrong. But when they've done something right, something as little as taking out the trash, something as little as making you a meal, Making you a meal is not even little. Something as little as even you organizing their, their clothes or even laying the bed or even getting the house to look good and organized. Just little, little things. Compliment your partner on them. Your partner has taken the time to do the grocery shopping. Thanks a lot, babe, for doing the shopping today. It, has, it saved me a lot of stress and I really appreciate your effort and your time in doing this. Don't be lackadaisical or nonchalant with your partner, especially for married people who feel like, eh, is it not his responsibility? Yes, it's his, it may be his or her responsibility, but that doesn't mean that you don't acknowledge them and compliment them and say thank you to them when they have done it. Thank you. Thank you and showing gratitude and appreciation makes someone want to do that thing for you over and over and over again. But when you feel like it's their responsibility and it's their job and you don't have a reason to tell them thank you, trust me, they will start resenting you and may end up not even wanting to do it. And even if they do it, they're not doing it from a place of love. They're doing it from a place of obligation. You want your partner to always do things for you from a place of love. That's the most genuine way anyone can do anything for you. So learn to be very vocal with your compliments, especially when it comes to your partner. Okay. The next point that I've put down here would be stay positive. As an individual, be very positive, have a positive vibe, have a positive aura. Don't be the one who is saying things like things like this is impossible we can't do this we can't get this done you're always there's always a wall there's always a blockage you never see the beauty or the possibility in anything you are just very negative you're just very like it's just very difficult to get through to you your partner can't even share their ideas with you without feeling or thinking that they're going to get a roadblock from you like be very positive have very positive energy Get positive error, build positivity, be positivity. I tell you, it would attract 
your partner to you and it will keep his or her interest alive. Next, I put down here is be kind to one another. Show active kindness. Kindness, kindness. Kindness is one of the most important ingredients that keeps a relationship active. When you are compassionate and kind towards your partner, they feel it, they see it. Kindness goes a long way and you want to ensure that you're constantly and always being very kind to your partner. And the final one that I've put down here on my list for today's video would be create a lot of feel good moments. Feel good moments are moments and memories that you both will look back on. Maybe when things are not even going as planned or you are going through some challenges and you remember those feel good moments, it helps you just keep calm and know that things would be all right. Feel good moments can be moments like you, moments you spend praying together, moments you spend worshiping together. It can be your date night moments. It can be the times where you have scheduled to review your relationship. It can be the time where you've shown acts of kindness to one another. It can be a time where you both traveled to do something um, to have an experience of a country. Feel good moments can be a time where you just bought your partner a gift and you both exchange gifts. You both took the time to cook together. Create a lot of memories that, that are feel good memories. Intentionally do it. Be conscious about it. Be aware of those times when you're doing those things. Sometimes in your house, when your partner is not even expecting it, maybe decorate the house and put petals, put flowers, buy them flowers. I know someone who delivers flowers to his wife every Monday morning. Every Monday morning, he delivers roses, flowers to his wife just to wish her a beautiful week and ensure that her week is as beautiful as the roses that have been delivered. And he single-handedly picks out the flowers that will be delivered. So imagine you as a wife receiving that from your husband every time and you think about it every time. Maybe one day he decides that he wants to stress you. But when you remember the flowers he's sending you, you're like, you know what? I'm going to temper justice with mercy. I mean, is that what they say? And you forget all the things that he's done. Like, because you're like, he sends you flowers. Who doesn't want to get flowers though? So create a lot of feel good moments. Trust me, it will keep the spark alive and keep your partner's interest alive as well. And again, I'm going to stay at this point. Don't wait for your partner to take a lead. Whether you're a man or a woman watching me, don't wait for your partner to be the one to take the lead to start doing these things for you. Take the lead. You are the one who has been exposed to this information. You have this knowledge now. Take the lead. If you have a partner who you can talk to about it and get them to watch this video, get them to watch it or you talk to them about it. But take the lead. And if you have a partner who is not about this life that I've just talked about now, you can take the lead and then from by you being the example, they start to see how you are being better and how you're changing. And trust me, they start to emulate you. They start to copy you and they start to see things from your perspective and start doing things like you're doing it. Now that's all I have for you guys for today's episode. So keep love flowing, keep kindness flowing, keep compassion flowing. And above all and in all, remember to stay elegant. Take care guys.